Okay, so we have been looking at search algorithms for constraint satisfaction and we have started looking at algorithms which look back and try to decide in a smart fashion where to jump back when they encounter a dead end. We started by looking at Gashnik's back jumping algorithm and we could see that it could make a safe and maximal jump from a leaf dead end, but not from an inter internal dead end. So, that has motivated us to look at this graph based back jumping which decides as to where to jump back basically based solely on the uh, topology of the graph. So, we saw at towards the end of the last class that if you for example, find that x 7 is a dead end and then you can jump back to the parent of x 7 which is x 5. And if x 5 also happens to be a dead end, you can jump back to the parent of x 5 which is x 4. But if x 4 also happens to be a dead end and we call these dead ends as internal dead ends, it is not safe to jump back to x 1 even though x 1 is the sole ancestor and parent of x 4. That is because the inconsistency that we observed at x 7 could have been caused by the node x 3 essentially. So, we need to define a slightly more refined notion of, of the set of ancestors and we will call this set as the set of induced ancestors, ancestors and we will have a notion of an induced parent. So, let me describe this with a diagram. Let us say that, so we are looking at some definitions. So, let us say we have these various variables, one of them is x i, the one that we are stuck at. So, let us say this is, uh, uh, let us say this is x i and in some sense what I am drawing here is a timeline. So, time is moving from left to right and the way that processing has happened is that you started with uh, x 1 and then you moved on to x 1 which I will depict by drawing this line here which says that, that you have gone past x 1, you have found a value for x 1 and then you have gone further inside and then at some point you have come back to x i and you find that x i is an internal dead end essentially. So, at this stage it is an internal dead end. And the question we are asking is where to jump back from here essentially. Now, this, this time period from which we first crossed x i and then we came back to x i is called a session. So, this time period is called a session. And in this session, one particular node, let us say this one was a leaf dead end So, we already know what to do when you are at a leaf dead end. You look at all the parents of this leaf dead end. So, this basically shows the fact that, that these are the parents of this node. Essentially. and you jump back. So, these are all the ancestors of this node and we had defined the notion of parent as a latest ancestor. So, the parent of this node, let us let me call it uh, 
x k and let me call this intermediate node as x j essentially. So, x j is equal to parent of, so we will use the word p for parent x k. So, if you are at the leaf tenant, it is fine to jump to the parent which is this x j essentially. Okay, so, that let us depict by the fact that you jump back to this node here which is the parent essentially. and then from here let us say you jump back to x k, why would you do that? You would do that if these were all the parents of xj and let us say for some reason you jump back to this node xi uh, and you are stuck at xi which is an external internal dead end essentially. So, you look at the parents of x i which are let us say this and this let us say two parents in this case. So, the question we are asking is you started with x k then you jump back to x j and this is purely based on graph information and then you jump back from x j to x i and we will see why we did that in a moment. And now you are asking where to jump back from x i essentially. So, if you if you take the union of all the so okay. So, this this period by which you started you crossed x i and you crossed uh, x j then you went to x k, x k was a leaf dead end you jumped back to x j and from there because it was an internal dead end you jump back to x i essentially. So, these three nodes x i, x j and x k they are called the set of relevant dead ends. So, the set of relevant dead ends start with the leaf node that you started jumping back from or you started retreating from and any intermediate node that you may have jumped back which was also an internal dead end. So, in this, in this example when you are trying to ask the question as to where to jump back from x i, we have a set of three relevant dead ends essentially. So, now you collect together all the ancestors of uh, this set. these are ancestors of relevant dead ends projected to a i minus 1 or x i minus 1. Basically. So, all, all those ancestors which lie before x i essentially. So, these are all the candidates for, for which you want to jump back to and the culprit is this one. and it is identified as the latest amongst 
induced ancestors. So, I may write the word induced here. of x i. So, the induced ancestor the set of induced ancestors of x i is not only the ancestors of x i, but also the ancestors of all those nodes that you have retreated from the so called relevant dead ends for x i in this particular session when we started. Uh, uh, so, this, this place is called uh, in visit x i in visits at this point and, and is exiting at the other point. So, so, during this session whatever are the internal dead ends or the leaf dead ends we encountered they are called the relevant dead ends and if you collect all the ancestors together uh, they form the set of ancestors and from the set of induced ancestors of x i you take the most recent one and that is called the uh, induced parent of x i essentially. So, we have a set of induced ancestors of x i and the latest among them is the induced parent of x i and this graph based back jumping essentially jumps back to this set essentially to, to this node essentially. So, that is the culprit. So, let us see what the algorithm looks like. Uh, Or maybe we should just write down the definitions first. We will use the term ancestor X to stand for set of ancestors of X, then parent x, parent of x which is the most recent ancestor. Remember that we are talking about a graph here. So, the ancestors and parents are defined over the constraint graph. Essentially. Then if a i is a dead end then we say so ai is an assignment to variables from x1 to xi then the parent of a i is the same as parent of x i plus 1. So, if remember if when you say that the, the partial assignment a i is a dead end it basically means you cannot find a value for x i plus 1 then the parent of x i plus 1 is the most recent ancestor which is this one essentially here. Then we have this set of induced ancestors for this x i plus 1. Okay, so, before we do that we have to define the, the relevance dead ends. The set of relevant 
dead ends is defined as follows. Uh, if x i is a leaf then this set is equal to simply x i maybe we have a definition is equal to r of x i and if x i is an internal dead end then r x i If you jump back from XA, we basically collect together the dead ends. So, the basic idea is that you just keep collecting together the dead ends as you keep jumping back, and the whole set of dead ends is a uh, set of relevant dead ends. Then we have the set of induced ancestors. Let us call it I y and if 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 this set of relevant dead ends is y then the set of induced ancestors is the union of ancestors of y such that y belongs to this y intersection with or projected onto x 1 to x i minus 1. So, let me separate this out. Okay. And finally, the induced parent of x i which we will denote by p i of y is the latest variable in the induced ancestors of y and that is the culprit. That we need to jump back to essentially. So, let us quickly write down the algorithm uh, for graph based back jumping. So, the only thing we need to do here is to keep track of the induced ancestors and the latest among them which is the induced parent essentially. So, let us assume that we have we have some function which will compute uh, the set ancestor for each x i we can just look at the graph. 
So, remember that an ordering is given to us. So, the set of ancestors is determined by the ordering and then as before we start with i is equal to 1, we make a copy of the domain and we say that the set of induced ancestors which we will call as Li as the ancestors of Xi. Initially the ancestors is the set of induced ancestors and then like before we start searching forwards while i is less than n we assign a value x i and this select y is a simple consistency check which is Okay, so, I will not write the rest of the algorithm, but basically you pick one keep picking one value from the domain of its variable and check whether it is consistent with the partial solution constructed so far. So, there is nothing exciting going on here. The interesting part is if x i is equal to null, that means we are at a dead end, then we first store the index and then we jump back to the latest index in L i. So, remember that that L i is a set of induced ancestors. Initially of course, it is just a set of ancestors, but, but, but as you keep jumping back, you keep collecting more ancestors, which is what we are doing here, that we are updating L i to L i union L i this variable that we stored minus x i. So, here we are basically we have taken the union of the, the two sets of ancestors else as for as before move forward make a copy of the domain and start creating the set of ancestors as and this is where we end and after this of course, you either return inconsistent all the solution as the case may be. Let me just write it in i is equal to 0 return inconsistent. So, i will be 0 of course, when you keep backtracking or back jumping and you cannot jump any back for anything any, any anywhere behind. So, you have exhausted all options. I will else return the solution. Okay, so, as you can see the basic idea in graph based back jumping is captured in this diagram that we drew a short while ago that we have this set of induced ancestors which is this set and 
and this we compute as we jump back. So, the basic idea to jump back is to jump back to the parent of a given node, but if you are jumping back from an internal node, you may want to jump back to the parent of one of the nodes that you jumped back from, which is one of the relevant dead ends in that particular session. So, it is a parent of one of these, these relevant dead ends and it is that parent which is the latest amongst them. So, the basic, basic idea is to keep collecting the, the set of induced ancestors as we, as we jump back and then from that set you pick the latest. The algorithm graph based back jumping as you can see can jump back from any internal node which is different from what Gashnik's back jumping did. Gashnik's, Gashnik's back jumping could jump back from the leaf dead end, but from internal dead ends it only stepped once one, one step back essentially. Graph based back, back jumping can jump back from anywhere, but even this at times can do unnecessary work essentially. And that happens when that happens because this algorithm is very conservative. It says that if you are connected to another variable, that variable must be the culprit or could be the culprit essentially. And in fact, the most recent amongst them, which is the parent, is the culprit. Now, as you can imagine, the parent need not be the culprit in the sense that the inconsistency that you are looking at need not have come from the parent and it might have come from earlier essentially. Okay, so, the next algorithm that we will see which is called conflict directed back jumping in some sense combines the idea of graph based back jumping and Gashnik's back jumping and it looks at values or that which were conflicting to decide what the culprit should be. Unlike graph based back jumping which does not look at values at all, it just looks at the graph topology, but it has like graph based back, back jumping the ability to jump back from internal dead ends as well. So, we will do that in the next class I think.